At Roscoe's insistence, Chris accepted the chair next to him that he'd directed Brandon to carry over from the adjoining dining room. Melanie, Gail, and Hillary had squeezed onto the sofa while Arthur sat in the other armchair that had been Jones. Brandon perched on the rolled arm of the sofa next to Melanie. Nick Degrassi, who reminded Chris of a scruffy John Cusack, had also pulled up a dining room chair to complete the circle. Only Wink remained standing. He'd refused a seat, choosing instead to remain at Roscoe's side. I'm changing my will, Roscoe announced without preamble. Artie, I'm still leaving this property to you, unless it sells first. It's going on the market as soon as I clear everything out. I already have an agent lined up. You already know all that. Arthur's face was impassive. He nodded, apparently relaxed, although his index finger tapped like a heartbeat on the arm of the chair. You said you didn't want my stamp collection, but I'm leaving it to you anyway. You can always donate it to the Chicago Philatelic Society if you don't want to keep it in the family, but I want you to have it as soon as I can find it. Roscoe had already asked her to keep an eye out for it, but Chris made a mental note to search for the plastic tub containing his albums and stock books tomorrow. Nick, I'm leaving my car to you, unless I decide to get rid of it before I die. You've taken good care of it all these years, and I appreciate it. Gail's eyes narrowed at her ex. Her father gave her a quick shake of his head and she kept whatever she was thinking to herself. Roscoe coughed and cleared his throat. As firm as his voice sounded, his emphysema was advanced enough to require oxygen several times a day. Coughing wasn't unusual for him, but a small frown line appeared on Wink's usually worry-free face. After taking a few shallow breaths, Roscoe continued, I'm also adding two new bequests, $10,000 each, to go to Wyatt Keller and Crystal Ward. Chris exchanged a shocked look with Wink. $10,000? That would mean so much to her family. Tears burned her eyes. She was overwhelmed by her neighbor's generosity and stunned speechless. Surprised you two, didn't I? Roscoe chuckled. He pointed his finger and panned it at his relatives. Not a word from any of you. These two have helped me more in the last few weeks than anyone, and I want to do this. He waited a beat, but no one challenged him. As for the rest of my estate, Roscoe paused, heightening the drama. I've decided to leave it to three charities that I've long supported. What? You can't be serious, Gail exclaimed, breaking the shocked silence. Dead serious, 